Yeah, good afternoon if you're in New York and good evening if you're in Ghana. We are now giving you an update of the Ghana uh, elections and obviously uh, it's uh, way past uh, 7 o'clock in Ghana and voting has since stopped. So we have on the phone and via Skype some people on the ground. We have Richard Mensa who is in Ghana in Accra. We also have Bright Te who is coming by telephone and also Jamila who is based in Washington, D.C. People, how are you? And welcome to Sahara TV. Welcome to Sahara TV. How are you? Fine. Yeah. We'll start with you, Mr. Richard Mensa. Can you tell us exactly where you're located? Well, I'm located, I'm located in, Adabraka, in Accra, which is part of the Corrective Constituency. Present. So that's where I am now. I've been also to other constituencies and other areas to yes, uh, get a fair idea of what is happening elsewhere. Okay. Now, can you tell us exactly how the elections have been proceeding and uh, what your observations have been so far? Well, so far, in terms of the elections, it's been proceeding cautiously and uh, very well to plan. Uh, when I say that, I refer to how the EC had planned to do it and how the we're hoping that it turns out. My observation so far has been that there's been uh, some challenges which uh, comes with the new uh, system that was adopted. In, in all the five elections that we've had till now, uh, we've used uh, different forms of identification in terms of how the person to vote is identified to vote. However, yeah, this I, year... And, and I know it's, I think it's the biometrics, right? Yeah, now we, we, we're now using biometric we, 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 we were not using that before and therefore the system of uh, verifying who you are the system of checking the person before he gets to vote is now different and we were using the verification machine after you are going through the process of really checking uh, from the register that you are who you say you are the verification machine turns out to verify through your fingerprints and that has been the particular challenge for almost all uh, all over the country and I'm can, saying can, so can, you, can you can you briefly now. tell us exactly how these biometrics work for those of us who well, don't uh, really understand this is how it works when you get to uh, the polling center you 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 give your identification to the card that you carry it is then referred to uh, the various serial numbers that you have uh, within the uh, the biometric register then after that you move to a next table where there is a machine that you have to put your fingerprint on. And then it, it then tends to verify and, and, and okay you as who you, take, who you say you are. Now, now, just, so be, then, be, just before you get very far, would you have uh, submitted your fingerprinting before whilst you're registering to vote? Yes, that, that is the process when we're going through the biometric registration. Okay. As you go to the biometric registration, then you give your name, everything, and then you go to the process of identifying yourself uh, with your fingerprint so that the, the data is captured with your fingerprint. And that, you know, obviously will cut down the issue of voting and double registration and all that. So on, on the day of voting, you, you are again required to put your fingers on that machine and for the machine to say that, yes, you are who you say you are right. before you are given the ballot paper to vote for both the president and for the parliamentary candidate. Okay, and so far it worked perfectly as far as you are concerned? Not, not, not at all, not at all. It's, it has not worked perfectly, especially the verification machine. And that is the challenge we are having. Now. I guess for those who are outside uh, Ghana, they... You know that we start our voting from 7 a.m. and we close at 5 a.m. Right. As I speak to you now, uh, the Electoral Commission has come out with an indication to say that for places that the verification machines don't work. In fact, as I speak to you now, there are places that people did not have the opportunity of voting because the verification machines either broke down or it worked until some time and it's not working again. Do you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you think the breakdown is because people are not so uh, skilled in using these machines yet or it is probably malfunction or could it be uh, some kind of tricks people are playing? What do, what, do, what do you think? 
Well, for me, tricks are out. I think it's technology, and technology has its own way of failing you when you need it most. Uh, well, for, for the reasons that you give, the last reason, no, I don't think people are being tricky in this business. But when it comes to people who are not really very trained on in, in, in that technology and using it, yes, I can say to a large extent, that is it. When it comes to people not using it well, well to a large extent, that should be it. And you know, issues of verifying yourself by your fingerprints also come with its challenges. For instance, if you work out very often with your with your hands, you are likely to encounter problems when you are verifying yourself through fingerprinting, especially when you, you use a lot, you do a lot with your hands. So that has been the particular challenge. And so we, here we are in a situation whereby we are expecting to finish with our voting Day, the electoral commission is saying that tomorrow, those who did not have the opportunity, uh, i.e., by way of the uh, uh, machines, verification machines breaking down, and those who couldn't vote and others are coming back tomorrow to vote. And that is unprecedented in oh. the history of Ghana's fourth republic. There's never been an occasion that, even with the peculiar challenges that we have, I, I, I guess I guess this is a sign of true democracy. So we're going to pause on that for a minute, and we go over to Mr. Bright. Say, Mr. Bright, say, how are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Yo, okay. Can you tell us exactly where you're located? Accra Central, to be precise. Okay. How's it been going for you in that constituency? It's been great. Uh, permit me to uh, send my warm regards from Ghana to your cherished uh, audience out there. Thank uh, so you. So far, I think it's been it's been good. It's been very great. Uh, it's been unprecedented. I would say, uh, just like Richard has said, that um, we are doing or practicing uh, using biometric exercise uh, to to understand that situation in Ghana, I think a little history will do that. Uh, since 1992, uh, Ghana has moved from using an opaque ballot box to a transparent ballot box, and then we've moved from there now to biometrics. So which means we've made an advancement or we've made a progress. And we've moved from having a separate uh, parliamentary election and a presidential election to having a simultaneous election for both the uh, presidential and parliamentary all on the same day. So I think in that direction, we, we're making a, a, a progress in that direction. I think that biometric is, is a bit new. It's, it's new one way or the other. And the process is that we had a period to do the registration. Then we had another period to do the verification to verify that your registration details were correct. And today we have the opportunity to do the election. What I think the uh, biometric uh, exercise brings to the front is that it presents uh, was the name the opportunity uh, to cross out the double uh, eliminate double voting which right. usually happens in some African countries so this now we, we taking out double voting because this is biometric you cannot enter it twice so it helps one way or the other to deepen democracy within uh, within Ghana to be precise. And also, I think one other thing is it does, that it brings credibility uh, to the system because it injects the issue of the system uh, having duplicated or bloated uh, uh, was the name registry. So I think in that sense, it, 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 it helps a lot. And this year, uh, we've had the opportunity to, to see uh, what's the name, the security service, um, uh, all the security service come together and uh, present a very uh, good exercise. We've had the military join hands with the immigration service, the, the, the prison service, and the police service. So it's been orderly so far. The process, uh, we've ended it a couple of hours ago. Collation is being done uh, for some constituencies. Uh, they've announced uh, the results for other constituencies where they had challenges with the machines, the biometric machines. What happened is that the Electoral Commission, like Richard rightly said, uh, they have uh, given opportunity to those who are able to vote today to vote tomorrow. So one way or the other, everyone, uh, not, uh, I mean, people are not disenfranchised. Uh, they, they are given their right to vote tomorrow, which I think is a very good thing, and I commend the Electoral Commission for that. And, but, but so far, it's been, it's been very, very good. It's been very peaceful. It's been very calm everywhere you go to. And just that like there are pockets of issues, a pocket of issues like the one I write, uh, rightly mentioned earlier on the, the machines, uh, which we can actually attribute to maybe uh, the more functioning of the machine. Maybe uh, the specification didn't meet 
uh, the requirements here in, in Ghana because okay. for some reason you realize that the machines, uh, what's the name, they, they seize working or they freeze like we would say in our balance. So uh, those are very minute things that, right. that came up. So can I just uh, pause you, can I pause you for a minute? We're going to cross over and come to the United States. We have Jamila on the uh, Skype as well. Jamila, can you chime in yes. and uh, your observations of the elections from the United States in Washington, D.C.? Uh, well, first of all, I want to say uh, hi to my colleagues in Ghana, and thank you for the great work that you're doing. Thank um, you. I am currently in Washington, D.C., and I am a member of the group Ghana Decides. And uh, we, I mean, we've been following the election. A lot of the Ghana Decides uh, members are actually on the ground at various polling stations all across the country. So what we've been doing is we've been posting updates on the situation on the ground, mainly via Twitter and Facebook. And reading those, I would say that it's all very encouraging. Um, yeah. It seems like the voting was going pretty well um, for most, most parts of the country. However, towards, I think, this afternoon, that's afternoon here, uh, just about poll closing time in Ghana at 5 p.m., we heard about verification issues, mainly in the northern part of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And I'm from the northern part of Ghana, so that, that was uh, definitely very, very concerning to me um, because it seems as if like large numbers of people are not voting. In, in at a center where they have about 900 people, they have only 500 people who voted and 400 people have not voted. So that's just an example of the, right. the, 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 the impact that um, the, the verification... Why, why, why do you think these people have not voted? Is it because they're not... It, what, what do you think? No, it's, it's, I think it's, it, it comes down to the technology. I think that's the main issue right, right. now. It's the biometric system. And as um, my colleagues were mentioning, whether it's because people don't actually know how to use it or because it has defects, that's what, that's what the main issue is. People have been in line, like, I think since last night, maybe around right. 7 p.m., 8 p.m. So people have been in line. It's not a question of people not wanting to vote. It's quite the contrary. People do want to vote, but the issue is that they're just having some technical problems. Um, that said, it is encouraging that the Electoral Commission has asked that it be adjourned to tomorrow. Right. But right now, it's it's. I think the main thing that has to be done is to get the right information to people on the ground and to make sure that people are not agitated because there is the tendency for people to just take something and run with it the wrong way. So right. it's a lot of right. expectation management that has to be done right now. So, and okay, now we're going to go back to you, Mr. Mensa. So briefly, just tell us exactly what your predictions would be of this election. Do you, uh, so far with the results coming in? Well, um, I think it's going to be a very tight race because even with the results that are coming in, right. you can see that it's, it's a two-horse race between uh, the ruling NDC and the mm -hmm. biggest opposition, the NPP, and that, that is what is showing everywhere. We've started receiving some of the polling station results, and there are a few surprises, and so we are, you, you, it, it is expected that uh, some uh, big names will lose their seats in terms of the parliamentary. However, when it comes to the presidential, it, it's going to be a two-horse race, and it's very, very tight. And you see, the reason why it's become difficult for us to be to, to be very predictive is that in this very particular election for between 1992 until now in these particular elections we are unable to say that it is a choice election or it is a, 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 a what we call some uh, uh, how do I even put it? Either a choice election or a referendum election. And this is what I mean. In, in, in the past elections, it's either been a sitting president against an opposition leader or that nature. In this particular right. election, we are having two people two people who you can describe as people who have not been there before because Mahama is just coming in to fill in the gap. And so it is not a referendum on Mahama's administration. It's just getting it in uh, 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 three years. However, in part, you can say that it's a referendum on his association 
with uh, the late president, Prof. Sam Mills. Now, when you talk about choice uh, election, is it a choice of policies? So you are talking of choice of uh, the two main political parties, Nana Ado and uh, John Mahama. You cannot say so fully because in this very particular instance, John Mahama has had the opportunity of being a vice president for these years. Nanado has been at the background of politics and is now coming over. So the choice will really be between their policies. John Muhammad did not have the opportunity of formulating real grounded policy than to say that I'm going to continue with what Professor Mills did what uh, did say, and for the MPP candidate, is at least one policy that is resonating is a free SHS, which is a senior high school policy that is resonating. And Bahama comes back, he said, look, the free is granted in our constitution. I think we need quality. So those are the arguments going to. So I, whatever way you look at it, right. there are various factors played. So you are able to put your hand and say that so, when it is this, this person is taking it. Yeah, and that I, is why it is close and tight. OK, I'm just going to read a, 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 a statement here by obviously one of uh, the supporters for Nanadu. He says, if you give a school uniform today, I, I have not given you anything because it, wasn't, it, it won't last for a year. If you give a laptop, I haven't given you anything because it won't last for 10 years. But if I give you lasting legacy like free SHS, I've given you something and your children's children can benefit from. Vote for Nana Adu and the NPP party, of course, and let's move Ghana forward. So, Bright, what is your take yeah. uh, with this kind of uh, situation? Do you believe those statements? Again, uh, yes, uh, yes and no, and uh, to understand, uh, uh, I, I think, again, we have to uh, put things in perspective to say that uh, this year, again, unlike um, other previous elections where uh, sympathy has been drawn towards personalities, admiration for personalities, this year, sympathy has been drawn towards issues, and it's been an issue based for all the eight candidates who, who are contesting or are starting to be president, has been based on issues. Uh, Loud among the eight candidates as, as the NPP, the National Patriotic Party, and then the National Democratic Party. And the, like um, Richard obviously said earlier on, the Patriotic Party has been loud on the, 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 the slogan of uh, free education. And, and that's one of the comments you just raised. But again, another argument is that for other countries, African countries um, like uh, Kenya and other, a few other countries, they have tried the, the free SHS. And the argument is that. Uh, the, the degree of success of the free SHS um, to, to talk about. And uh, again, the NDC is also not standing on one point to say it's it's, uh, they are not ag they are against the free uh, SHS, but they are talking about that the country is not ready to finance the cost of free uh, SHS now. So those are the two issues. One party, one side is saying that, yes, we can start this and we can do it now. So vote for us and give us the opportunity to do it now. Another party, which is the National Democratic Cong uh, Party uh, Congress, NDC, is uh, saying that uh, Ghana is not gotten there yet. We need to put in place the infrastructure. We need to train the teachers to teach uh, or, or to be there. We need to build the, uh, uh, the school building that will accommodate the, the students before we, we, we get into psychiatric debates like uh, let's make it free. So it's been two, and I think that is what Ghanaians are voting on in the, in the meantime. Uh, when you look at the pedigree or the, the history of these two, two candidates, the Nana Fuado has been uh, competent, so he's been an MP for 12 years, Mahama is probably been an MP for 12 years, and mm -hmm. uh, Mahama has been, uh, has been, has also been, uh, was an, a deputy communication uh, uh, minister and then a, a, a communication minister. Nanado has been an attorney general and as well as the uh, was the name, uh, foreign minister. So they all have a history. They, they all have the competencies. But the, the point is that Ghanaians are voting on issues, and I think that is the, the, the good thing that is happening in this election. So the, the country now, I can't predict. We have a difficulty to say who is going to win because uh, obviously a section of the country would want to say, okay, we want free SHS now, which is issue based. Another would want to say, okay, we agree with uh, Mahama to say that, okay, let's let's provide the, the students with subsidies, let's give them free laptops, let's uh, expand the, the infrastructure, 
and then later let her free SHS. So it's divided. It's very difficult to say. But opinion polls coming in uh, seem to, 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 to be for various constituencies. In some constituencies, the NDC is winning. In other constituencies, the NPP is obviously winning. And there are strong goals for each of them in, within the country. Uh, for over the years, again, uh, when you look at the, the, the map or the demographics of, of Ghana, you realize that the NDC um, usually carries about uh, four different regions, uh, which, uh, and then the NPP usually also carry about uh, two different regions, and the four regions are the swinging regions where usually it swings between. So if the, each party is, is, is able to contest or, 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 or get votes from the swinging region, then that can determine who the winner is going to be. But it's very difficult at the moment to say who is going to win based on the issues that have been, or, or the manifesto okay. Uh, uh, so, issues. Yeah, okay. Forward. Thank you very much, uh, Bright. We're going to ask Jamila. Uh, Jamila, would you, really, would you, do you say that uh, Ghana has been a beacon of democracy in African countries? Because... A lot has been said about the democracy there. Um, I do think that we have contributed to enhancing democracy on the continent as a whole, just uh, from our immediate experiences. Um, I think the most recent example beyond this election is when our former president passed away. And I mean, I was in Accra at the time, again, working with um, Ghana Decides, which is funded by Star Ghana. Um, right. and it was a smooth transition. It was a, it was a it was a smooth transition, but there was that moment of uncertainty. Right. And I'm sure in any other country there would be that moment of uncertainty as well. But what set us apart is that people didn't immediately act, but rather they waited to see what the leadership would say. And so it went to parliament. We immediately had Mahama take over in under 24 hours. And then from then on, the framework was laid down for how things would but, go. But uh, it, before, um, obviously, the death of the president, was there any secrecy or, like, uh, holding back information about his illness? Because it kind of hit people, like, suddenly, and he's dead, you know? Yes, um, I, that's, I think that's still an issue of contention, if you ask right. many Ghanaians. Uh, but then again, it comes down to national security, because if you think about it, if they had mentioned that he passed away before they had a plan, things could have gone totally a different way. So um, I, I, I would rather not comment on that because I think that it comes down to personal con convictions. Right. But if we go down to the heart of the matter, the, the whole idea is Ghanaians want to vote and Ghanaians right. will make sure that they protect their vote. I think that's what we're hearing from a lot of the polling stations that are having issues with the biometric um, machines is that people are reluctant to go home. They want to stay around or stick around and ensure that the votes that have been cast, nothing happens to the ballot boxes. Okay. So a lot of emphasis is placed on voting, and I think that is the value here. Okay, I'd like to thank all of you for taking your time to speak to us. I think we're going to stay up and uh, watch the elections, you know, unfold. And also, you know, we could stand by. We'll probably reach back to you guys to give us an update as uh, the results come in. But. Uh, Mr. Richard Mensa in Ghana, Mr. Bright Say also in Ghana, and you, Jamila, thank you very much. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. Yeah.